<laughs> April Fools, guys. We're, we're not working on how to train like Brad Marchand, although I do have a clip of him here on the iPad. Uh, <laughs> the real stream is how to train like pasta. All right, Pastor Mac has, I mean, Brad Marchand, skilled Let's guy. Let's get the spaghetti out. He's, he's still, he's still a, sp uh, a skilled guy. Uh, I'm actually pretty amazed how he went from like a, a pure pest and grinder to a top 10 score in the league. He does have a decent story, just not a fan of the lack of respect he shows on the ice. Uh, but enough about that. I do have a clip of him on the iPad, though, if you tuned in for uh, Marchand. He does have a, a, one pretty sweet move after Pasta, fed him a nice pass. But this whole stream is how to train like Pasternak. Previous streams, how to train like Ovi, how to train like um, Crosby. Yeah. If you missed those ones, they're uh, the last two streams, so check those out. We got them timestamped for you, really easy for you to, to go. Um, let's just hop right into it and, and look at a clip. No, no wasting time. Oh, actually, one, one thing. Uh, we got the Hall of Fame. So we got, we got the Legends now. This is Legends Row from March. <laughs> we got the April Hall of Fame. Uh, anyone who, who drops a, a decent contribution through the Super Chat, always appreciate it. We'll toss your name up on the Hall of Fame. You guys are supporting us. We'll, uh, we'll you know, support you guys and, uh, and you know, give, give some, some, some clout. Yeah. Is, that, is that the right word? <laughs> give some clout. Uh, you just carry that, that tripod around, right? Uh, let's, yeah. get in, let's get in here. Let's, let's send it down. Uh, there we go. Pastanak. Pastanak. Pasta. <laughs> the first clip we're going to take a look at is a pretty good move. We're going to get into the good stuff, the juicy stuff right off the top. Give you guys a good move. Uh, let's just play it out, and then we'll play it back. Play it out. Hey, play DJ, back, play that record back. All right, there's one, Ooh. and then a different goalie. Same thing, same but different. All right, let's there we go. play that through. There is a slow-mo, I do believe. If not, we'll go frame by frame here. And whoop. Nice. Okay, so that's the fake backhand to forehand. He does it two different times, probably a couple more if I search through every single clip he has. Uh, we're going to take a look at this one first. So wide stance, notice this, right? Boom, boom. Nice wide stance. That allows him to shift his upper body weight. He's more deceptive for the goalie. He's moving the puck from his forehand to the backhand. We got Sawyer Winters. Why should I practice slew fitting? Brad is my guy he's from Z2. I love Brad Marchand. We got some Bruins fans. The thumbnail, LOL, says CBJ. Uh, thanks for everyone tuning in on YouTube. Let's get into this one. Um, so you can see right here what he does with his foot. He, he anchors it. He, he throws that heel up. What that allows you to do is pivot on it, and you use that in tight quarters, right? He doesn't have much room. He's trying to avoid that poke check. So he's going to uh, dig that heel in so he can pivot and then make a nice, sharp, tight move. It also buys him a little bit of space. If he has to bring the puck uh, sort of in into this area, his toe is out of the way. So it's kind of like a dual purpose, a little move that you can work on, a uh, nice, quick pivot. And he, his, his next move, he does it a little bit differently. But let, let's practice that on the net. So uh, actually, I'll, I'll just get you right there. And Hayden, you want to go um, want to go mobile with that? Take it off the tripod? Yeah. Yeah, a little easier to maneuver around. So I'll show you the move first, then we'll go in on the goalie, all right? So you're going to start here, all right? You could throw in like a forehand fake first, but the real fake is the backhand. So if the goalie is really quick, you want to move him over this way, kind of fake like you're going backhand, and then pull it back this way and get that shot. You can be more deceptive in the second move. He's a little more deceptive, so we'll take a look at that. Let's get this defenseman out of the way, all right? <laughs> so the first one you can practice, just go backhand, lift the heel, and then forehand and get that shot off. It obviously not a shot because I got the, the door there. Right? <laughs> yeah. If you've got rollerblades, toss the rollerblades on so you can practice that nice wide stance. That's the one thing you want to get here is that wide stance. Don't come in like this. You're more deceptive, nice and low, because now I can go this way and shift my body weight. It looks more like a shot than if I just go like this. This doesn't look like a shot. The goalie's probably not going to bite on this, but here down nice and low, boom, looks like I'm going to rip that one this side of the net. Goalie moves. I bring it back this way and get that shot. So we're going to do it lifting that, that foot uh, on shoes, right? So, so your wide stance, when I come back this way, I'm lifting my foot like that. Now, on shoes, you won't really feel much here. On rollerblades, you would feel it. On skates, you would feel it. It allows you to pivot and shift your weight there. So, oh, hey, how'd the neck go way over here? <laughs> that was the, uh, the Twitch uh, On the Twitch stream, we were practicing throwing the targets yeah. and then uh, shooting them out of midair. I wonder if anybody clipped that. Oh yeah, we didn't check. I'm, I'm hoping someone clipped a couple of the, uh, the snipes. Yeah. So Hayden was chucking the, the targets. I was sniping them in midair. I was seeing how uh, many shots it took and then we, we switched. Yeah. But enough about that. The net is back in place here. 
So you're gonna come in here, right? Fake to the back end, open that, and then come this way. You can start slow, get a feel for it. Remember to really shift that weight, right? So I'm gonna come in here, I'm shifting my weight this way, lift up the heel, buy myself a little space, and then pop it up. Uh, he does do it a different way, which we'll uh, take a look at. I've had it over here. Same move, but a little different. And if you want to start without the footwork, oh, I almost showed my password. You guys are going to log into my bank. I'm just kidding. I, it's a completely different password. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, just like my luggage. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get that. There we go. Okay, so this is a similar move here, except instead of that heel or that toe lift, see how he, he does a punch stop? I'm going to zoom in a little more. Oh, on that yeah. foot. Yeah. Watch, watch this foot. Instead of the heel, Right? He punches it in, and that allows him to quickly stop and change directions and cut across the top of the crease. So with shoes on, this will be a little harder to do. You can do that with rollerblades, possibly. Um, on ice, it's a little easier because you're using your edge. But he starts with that wide stance still. That's important, that wide stance, nice and shifty. Uh, he's on both inside edges, and then he jams that foot under onto his outside edge and cuts across, just finds an opening. He's beating that goalie to the post, right? So he's trying to freeze the goalie by going to the backhand there. Goalie looks, right? He puts down that pad thinking this is going to be a shot, and then he cuts. He buys him just enough space to get to that outside post, that far post. So here, uh, we can work on the footwork, right? And still walk through it, right? So start with a wide stance, puck in front, move the puck here, and then kick that foot, and then go there. Looks a little different with <laughs> Looks like on. you're doing like some sort of dance. Right, but, like... but we want to, well, that's essential. that's the punch stop. You go yeah. like that, right? You want one foot going this way, this one punches under. So you could try to just feel through that motion, what it would feel like. So in, instead of just kind of like standing on it, why not slide it under like that and then get that shot? Try right. to stay balanced, right? Yeah. Try, try to think how it would feel on the ice and try to replicate as Use best you can. Use your imagination. <laughs> right there, be creative, right? So start with the puck in front. Remember, wide stance, puck in front, moving it here, shifting your body weight to really sell that you're gonna get that back end. Then you're gonna throw this foot under, come here and shot, All right? So on the net, looks like this. Start in front, we're gonna fake that back end, punch that under, and then come this way. So obviously in shoes, Sliding your foot under is not doing anything for you, but on the ice, it will direct you to the other side of the net. You could start a little more on this side of the net if you want. Wide stand still, right? Sell this, push that foot under, and then come in there for that nice quick snap. And the whole point here, uh, sell the goalie. Another thing you can do, this is what Datsuk did. I'm gonna toss it in there. I know it's a Datsuk, you gotta pass the move, right? Datsuk opens the blade to really sell like that shot's coming. So hey, if you're getting right here, and I got the puck in front, move it here, and then open the blade, and then bring it back like that. So you could go like this, open the blade, and then bring it back. It's just one extra little fake, right? It, it's similar to uh, the pump fake, right? If you go nice and low here, Hayden. Huh? Yeah. The, the pump fake is just get, showing the blade, the forehand blade, like you're gonna take a shot, and then you go this way. So it's similar to that, but on the back end, you go here, open the blade, and then bring it back. It's just one more cue where the goalie's like, oh shoot, shot's coming, drops down, you got him, right? So boom, open the blade, bring it back. All right, let's hop into another one. And, and guys, what do you think of pasta? If we have any pasta fans in the chat, let me know. Uh, have you been doing your homework? So I've been, we've been talking about Ovi, we've been talking about Crosby. Have you guys tried any of those moves? And what'd you think? Did they work? Was it a challenge? Um, did you figure out anything uh, creative? Did you, you know, modify Make the drills at all? I, I wanna <laughs> see those things. I actually did see a few on my Instagram and I uh, reposted them, they were up in the stories. So uh, yeah. there, was, there was a kid with sidewalk chalk yeah. And he was drawing like Oh, I saw that. Yeah. 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 He was drawing like it's a okay, shoot from here, like here, a bad yeah, yeah, yeah. Like where he's gonna put the puck, where he's gonna shoot from. Yeah. Goes, sidewalk chalk is actually pretty sweet. If you had rollerblades, you could just make your own course. Yeah. It's like what, like a buck for some sidewalk chalk? Yeah, that's true. You don't need to have like all the obstacles. Yeah, just... you use what you got. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, that's the the fake. We're gonna zoom out here. Boom. We'll go again. Okay, so this one, oh, this this one is going to be a challenge for some people. Uh off the ice. A little bit different than on the ice. What we're looking at here is pasta. He's cutting towards the ice. It looks like he's gonna pass. Maybe he's gonna try to get through. Uh, you can see this defenseman. He's got him blocked. Good good stick on puck and body on body. He's playing him pretty well. Uh, pasta doesn't really have a lane right here. You know what's something would be interesting is if he did like a, a stick lift first and then walk through. Yeah. Now I'd like to see, like there is a little bit of that in the NHL, like uh, an offensive stick lift instead yeah, of defense. Yeah, it happens one. every now and then. But it not, does. Not very consistent. Uh, but he does not do that. No, he turns, spins, 
And now he's found some space here. And let's see, does he snipe? Boom, cool. Well, no, <laughs> he didn't score, but he did get a good shooting opportunity. So let's take a look at that again, right? So let's see the key, key things that we're gonna work on here. Puck is right there, making it look like you're gonna pass or cut that way, you're protecting it. Then you move it here. Now the puck is between, or the, the body, sorry, is between the defenseman and the puck, that's important. Sometimes when I teach this on the ice, the kids spin this way and put the puck right there. Now it's easy for the defenseman to get. So make, make sure you spin off of the guy, away from the guy. Uh, so you can put up an obstacle and you're bringing it around, getting in front, so you could either pass or shoot. All right, there we go. Let's try it out. So this is another, another drill for you guys, another homework. And remember, we timestamp these uh, after the fact. So if you wanna come back, revisit this video, hey, what was that drill? It's gonna be right in the comments. You can click on it. Boom, it's right there for you. Uh, so for me, I'm a righty. Let's move that shovel a little this way. Lefties can do it from the other side. Righties, it's gonna work better on the left side. Lefties, it's gonna work better on the right side. Because uh, for me, Right, I, I can fake like I'm gonna make a pass out this way or like I'm gonna cut into the center of the ice. So we're starting with the puck here, right? Right when we uh, make it look like we're gonna cut or fake, we're trying to manipulate the, the defenseman's stick, try to get them to take away that lane because we wanna use the ice on the other side. When that happens, you're gonna cut, spin around, and then from here, you could either get a shot. I have seen, uh, I think Malkin did it, Kane did it, um, or you could do a pass. I think Matthews did a nice spin pass like that. Uh, so you could take the shot right here, or you could bring it to your forehand and go for that snipe, right? And depending on how much room you have, you can modify this. Um, let's do that one more time. A little more speed now, right? So we're here, we're gonna bring the puck like we're gonna pass, and then we're gonna spin. Let's go for that shot, right? A few more times. So keys here, guys, coming in, sticks in front. We move it here like we're gonna pass or like we're gonna cut into center, and all of a sudden we're gonna spin and you're gonna get that shot or you can go to your forehand, get that shot. Now, the one thing that you can try, I'll give you some variations. Some people might find that they're losing the puck when they do that spin. So I'll show you, starting here. Give yourself a little more room, Hayden. Yeah, uh, okay. in the we, we got the, uh, <laughs> we're just reworking the studio here. Everything, there so there we go. Give Hayden a little more room. Um, what you might find is if you start spinning with the puck on the stick right here, Actually, Hayden, why don't you track the stick? That looked pretty sweet. So start with like uh, right here, right at the tip, and then just kind of follow it around. Right. So watch the puck. As I spin, the puck comes out. out. Oh no, it's it spun right off the blade. <laughs> right? Let's try that again. Uh, oh, spun off. As we move, the puck rolls off the blade. So one thing you can do to stop that from happening, just roll that top hand. Now you got it trapped under there, okay? But it still wants to spin off. You see it goes to the toe. I was a little faster, you couldn't keep <laughs> up, right? Right? So it's still spinning, it's still moving, but I'm trapping it a little bit better. Here's a trick you could do. Spot the puck. So instead of spinning, and you can use this in different areas, not just this move. Like work on this in different areas. Like maybe you wanna do a quick cut back in the corner, trying to uh, uh, evade a guy that's on your butt. <laughs> trying to get that puck from you, right? Yeah. So I'm going like this, making it look like I'm gonna pass. Instead of going like this and spinning with it the whole time, just give it a tap and then pick it up right there, all right? You could do it. I think Malkin does it. Malkin did give yeah. it a tap. Mal Malkin did that. Yeah. He came here, right? I think he drew it back, tapped it, and then picked it up like that and shot it, mm. right? And just getting, it's just getting the puck off your stick, mm -hmm. right? It keeps it from spinning. Like that reduces the spin on the puck. Yeah. So that's that's a variation you can do. And once you get that, you can use it all over the, the so same thing, puck in front, you're gonna move it back, tap it, pick it up, and then you can go for that shot. All right, so you can do one and then the other, one and the other, get a feel for both. All right. Next up, let's see what pass has got. And he, you know, going through his videos, he had a lot of like, ooh, that's a good one, ooh, I like that. He's got a lot of high, highlight reel stuff. Here. Yes, he's, he's um, you know, getting, he's creative out there. Uh -huh. Good player to do uh, this breakdown for. So thank you, this is for, uh, for Swifty50. Yeah. She's up on the, uh, on on the, the Hall of Fame. Yeah. We got Swifty50 said, do Pasternak, do Pasta, do Pasta. <laughs> so we're doing Pasternak. All right. Next up, oh, this one is shifty. Uh, Rival222 says, at we doing pasta Marchand because the pick on the front is Marchand, but you're talking about pasta. Um, that was an April Fool's joke. We are not licking people. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna show you how to break people's uh, stick blades by stepping on them uh, or how to smash people's faces off the ice or punch people in the back of the head. 
Uh, we won't be learning that today. It's it's pasta. So we're talking about pasta. Maybe you know, kind of like some people were here for uh, for Marshan by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> there is a clip from Marshan here. Uh, so don't worry, guys. Uh, so here's pasta. Nice little uh, toe drag, right? And then oh, we went for the pass, right? This is good though. See this toe toey gets by the, the the first defender. The other guy sticks to him. Another guy comes in wide open. The uh, the whoops, the defender and the goalie completely dedicated to this uh, t- stopping a shot, right? And he sneaks a pass right through wide open net, right there. All right here's another angle of it. So show it, and then tow it. He brings it right in close to his feet. Actually banks it off of his skate. But the big thing that he has here is a speed differential. He's going faster than this uh, defenseman. This defenseman is completely out of, <laughs> out of position. He's twisted right around, uh, trying to stop Pasta. But that does help. He's got the speed. He pulls the move. He moves the puck into an area where it's just outside of the defenseman's reach. And then he finds a lane underneath this guy's stick. So great awareness there. Let's. Uh, One part of that that uh, oh. yep. I think uh, is underrated is after he does the toe drag. Yep. The guy flips his stick around. Yep. And he, and he rec- still talks it under. So, like, he rushed his toe drag. Like, he backhanded it before he yeah. had full control there just to make sure it was under the guy's You can stick. see right there. Yeah. Let's zoom in. Right? He gives it a nice little tap right there to get it under the stick afterwards. So, that, that is pretty smart. The toe and then the tap. Because, like, if he had it kept going in the same motion, it would have been a poked yeah. off of oh, his Hold stick. on. Uh, Movie 426 says, Why does the title say Marchand? <laughs> And you're we're talking about pasta. Past. Guys, it was an April Fool's joke. We're not <laughs> licking people's faces in the live stream. Think we about COVID. A real one on Martian, Think so. about COVID-19, okay? Yeah. We're not going around licking faces. And, and, you know, okay, here's how to play like Brad Marchand. Take your skate on the face off, at the draw. And then you see this is the other guy's stick? Step on it and break his <laughs> stick blade. And then when you're called out for it later on, say, oh, uh, that was really rude. He was trying to doll in my skate blades. Like, why would he put his stick there when I was crunching the ice? Uh, you can also lick people's face. No, okay. it's, we're talking about pass. It was an April Fool's joke, guys. Um, but there is one clip from Brad Marchand. So if you're here from Marchand, stay tuned. I do have one nice move from him. He is a skilled player. He's just a bit of a pest. Um, all right, so, so the toe drag, here we go. All right, toe drag. What, what you want to do here, right? Roll this top hand over. You're going to touch the puck with the toe. Pull it in nice and tight. You want to get it in close to your body because you're trying to avoid the defenseman stick. So I'm going to use uh, Mason stick right here. Almost like a J right? into it, your toe. Yeah, exactly. So you're pulling it in and then like this, right? Pulling it. So, so you want to actually hold the puck a little further out. If you're, if you're holding the puck in front of you, you can't pull this move off. So you're going to move it here, right? The defenseman's going to try to get it there, and then you're going to move it out of the way, pulling it in and around. So it, after that, pass it a, a, a stick tap like that. You know, I should have updated the, uh, the thumbnail at the very last second. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could, still could hop in, but we're going to go with I it. I think it's <laughs> funny. <laughs> Everyone in the comments, Whenever someone says, why is he talking about pasta? Can you please respond? It was an April Fool's joke. You guys, are, I saw some people were, but everyone, like th- there's always you. new people. Yeah, joining. whenever new people join, like I thought he was talking about Shan, just say that was an April Fool's joke. We're not licking people in the stream. Yeah. <laughs> all right, yeah. so here we go. Uh, toe, so all we're doing is I'm rolling this top hand. That controls the blade. You can see it there, right? So roll, you gotta roll it and pull it. Roll it and pull it, all right? So right here, roll it, pull it, bring it in close to the feet, tap it under. I'm gonna go for the shot after. So if you guys want to uh, do this as a drill, what I would do is just set up some pucks back here, right? Uh, I'd move it from in front, go to the side, then pull it in, tap it, shot. Let's, might as well add the, the backhand touch as well, right? Uh, you could actually set up, uh, what do we got, a milk crate? Just to make it more uh, game-like, just if you wanna do it just like Marsh, or I'm just like pasta. I was gonna say marsh. <laughs> All right, we'll go here with a stick. One and, on the back. Yeah, too. and then throw another one on the back. Now we'll have to jump this stick. But you see how we got that set up? So the first one represents, you know, we're here, pull it here, tap it under. Oh, yeah. Right, and that's, that's working on getting a shot off when you're not fully set up. All right, tap it under, jump over the stick, and then shoot. Here you go again. Boom, tap under. And you can also go backhand. You know, be creative, mix it up a little bit. Uh, next up, I think Marchand is coming. For anyone who came for Brad Marchand, we got something for you. Don't worry. This is a good drill for homework. There you go, homework. You gotta try these out. 
uh, set this up. Show me on, on Instagram at how to hawk you guys. I want to see um, how you guys are training at home, doing your homework. So set something up like this. Toe drag around the top, tap it under, and then get that shot off. Woo. Next up. Okay, this one's it. If you came for Brad Marchand, you're staying for pasta. This is a good one. I think Bar Brad Marchand is after this one. Let's check. Nope. One more. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, so here we go. Uh, pasta gets the pass right there at the goal line. What, is, what can he do from there? Nothing, right? And then he's like, no, I still got a shot. Taps it through his legs and then gets a shot. Uh, it actually does trickle in and scores. It doesn't look like it there. Here's another shot, slow-mo. So receiving the pass down the goal line, tapping it through the legs, he's skating backwards, and getting a shot, right? Through the leg shot. This is really fun to practice. Um, if you have a friend, get them to pass you the ball. If you don't, you, or, or puck, um, if you don't have a friend, just set something up um, that's hard and you can bank a ball off of it. Practice doing it with a ball just to go through those motions. I'm going to use the, uh, the Extreme Passer Pro from Hockey Shot, right? So it's a, a bungee cord thing to set it up here. All I want to work on is getting it, set it up so you get it right on the stick. Steve Dangle has uh, nightmares from this because it was Hutchinson and net. Oh, it was Hutchinson, and net, yeah. <laughs> and he should have saved it. So, so you're just put, positioning yourself where you can catch the pass here and then get the shot off there. All right, obviously we can't skate backwards like uh, Pasta did, but still catch it, tap it, shot. Let's try to get it a little more. Go. Oh. <laughs> so what, what he does here, he catches it, moves it on the backhand through, and then he gets that shot off. All right, so you guys can work on the, the same sort of movement. Catch the puck, get it to the backhand, use the backhand to put it through, and then from here, it's a, a pull with the top hand and a push with the uh, bottom hand. It does take a little bit of uh, finessing to get like the right motion to get it up. Uh, if you want to do it actually a little further from the net, that might work, so I'll give myself a little more room. And then you want to throw yourself like an obstacle. Say like the goalie's pad is out, trying to get it up. You know, might as well throw something in front of the net. Give yourself a bit of a challenge. All right, let's get this out of here. So now here, back it. Oh, goalie saved it. Big save. Right, so now it's, it's giving me some more motivation. Oh no! <laughs> let's try it. Here, back in. Oh yeah, shelf. There we go. There we go, back in. There we go, we're getting it now, see? A little bit of practice goes a long way. Oh, snuck it past the, uh, the goalie's pad. <laughs> there we go, now I'm, I'm hammering. See, I didn't, there was no warmies, no practice beforehand. Oh yeah, another shelf. Now I'm gonna pull this off in men's league. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit down, be like, Caden, pass to me right here. Oh, oh pad. it still went up. <laughs> awesome. You can see my first few examples. Okay, I was just feeling through the motion, right? And then once I kind of dialed it in, I was like, all right, if I pull back a little harder and then try to connect with the puck while it's still moving with that nice snap, with the right blade angle, I was shelving them. So that's gonna happen when you're practicing. The first few you might not get, feel through it, go slower, and then try to add some pressure to it. Um, yeah, add an app school, make it fun. If you guys are practicing this on Instagram, let me know, at HowToHockey. You can tag Hayden as well, sure. HowToHayden, yeah. H-A-D-E-N. <laughs> I wonder if you have an imposter account with a Y. I don't know, probably not. <laughs> for, for all the, the misspells. Uh, we got another good one from Pasta coming up. So this one right here, just a nice move in the corner. It's just a quick cutback, right? I don't think he scored off this. Maybe he made a nice pass. Actually, let's play it through. He did score. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So skate. Oh, where would it go? There it is. All right, so he's coming in. You can see he's got like that uh, split stance right here. Uh, pucks in front. This is actually a pretty uh, tricky move because the defenseman does have a stick in the lane to kind of block that cutback, but he pulls it off anyways. So he, he did get away with it here. Uh, there was a chance we'd lose the puck, but it was a calculated risk and it paid off. And I think that he is trying to move the puck kind of like either in this area or this area. So if you have the awareness, you can still pull this off. So the, the key here, you can see with his blade, he rolls that top hand and he kind of brings the blade back like that. Right, so we could really yank that puck back. And even if uh, Tanev does make some contact, he can still power through and get the puck past. Because basically what he's doing, he's a split second ahead of Tanev. You can see Tanev's uh, skates are pointed down ice. 
as long as um, Pasternak can cut back fast enough, then Tanev still has like a split second before he can react, right? Now Tanev finally points his feet this way, but Pass is already going this way. He's like a half second too late, and it gives uh, Pass just enough time to get a shot off. All right, so we're just gonna work on that. There we go. With this uh, drill, you're pretty much separating the upper body from the lower body. Um, for anyone tuning in just now, Brad Marchand is in the title. It was an April Fool's joke. That's why it's a picture of me licking uh, Hayden's face. If you didn't get the joke, um, you know, go, go on. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe I'm just not funny. <laughs> we, we will show a, a Brad Marchand clip. I think it's coming up next, actually. Yeah. Uh, so this is working on separating the upper body from the lower body. Uh, what you want to do is start with the puck in front of you, right? So we're, we're stick handling here. As we come in towards the net, we're going to move our feet this way, but the, the puck comes this way. Now on the ice, you'd be curt, like uh, twisting your feet. So it's a quick motion like from here to here, that nice carve motion that you would make on the ice. Uh, but here, we just want to start with the puck here, quickly bring it here, and then get that shot. So uh, the main focus I want here is the top hand, controlling the puck. What you want to do is have the puck near the heel, so when you roll, you can pull it like that. So it's here, roll it, pull it. Right? You have to be pretty aggressive if you only twist a little bit. When you go like that, the puck will, will pop out right there. So you have to really roll that over and pull it back like that and then get that shot. So start with the puck in front, All right? pull it back, shot. You okay. could do like a... Like a Split stance. Like a, you could like kind of jump and stop True. doing it at the same right, time. Let's try it, let's try yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Just to get that feel, right? Well, because like it, it's starting with like a, a stance like this, right? And then, yeah, I guess switch your footwork up. Yeah. Good one, Hayden. I like that. <laughs> I like that. We're going to switch the footwork. So we're lead, leading with the right foot here. You can kind of like scoot. Yeah. Pull it back, switch footwork, get that shot. It just gives you something to, to signify that you need to switch. Uh, do something with the feet as long as with the uh, as well as with the upper body. So yeah. here, right, your your stance is there. Boom, switch, work, and break everything <laughs> in the garage. All right, one of your drills, guys. Try that out. Next up, I think Brad Marchand is next. For everybody who has been patiently waiting for Brad. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> gotta take that off. I know. Yeah. Um, it is Bra it's Brad Marchand for everybody who came. Which <laughs> how many people are watching now? Oh, we 198. Know. So you, we usually have 500 people watching at a, yeah. at a time. <laughs> Brad scared a few people away. Is, uh, not <laughs> they don't like the licking. All right, here, here's Brad Marchand. Nice fake shot. So he got this puck because Pasta did a nice spinorama pass to him. That was the highlight. But I like this leg kick. I like a little bit of a pump fake. Then he throws in the extra move, like he's going to uh, this side of the net. And then tucks at five. So great way to open up the goalie. Lots of nice fakes there. Why is it all against the Leafs, eh? I know. Why <laughs> is it all against the Leafs? Here it is again. I zoomed in the wrong spot. So gets the pass. Pump fake. Leg kick. Really selling like he's going to get that shot. Anderson bites. Right? Then he's like, oh, no, I'm actually going this way. Anderson pushes off a little bit. Oh, shoot. Stretches him out. Tucks at five. Let's go one more time in slow-mo, even though this really pains me to see Marchand's going <laughs> on the Maple Leafs. No! All right, here we go. So it catches the pass, throws up the leg. Nice leg kick, really sells it. Marsh or Anderson goes down. See that? Boom. Pads drop because that nice little leg kick. Then he throws in one more move just to open him up. He starts moving the puck there, and then Anderson sees he's going that way. He has to slide over and tucks it five. So we're going to work on a few of those fakes for... Everyone that was here for Brad Marchand, here is your deke. I, I didn't want to totally dog you guys if you didn't get the joke. <laughs> right? Start here. It's leg kick, right? So I like to do the pump fake and leg kick at the same time. Really sells that. All you're doing, you start with the puck um, more in front but off to the side. So it's not way back here. It's hard to sell a fake if the puck is... I mean, let me point at you guys. Yeah. Right? If the puck's back here, it's hard to sell a fake. Right? But if the puck is out front like that, now I can step, right? throw that leg up. So leg kick, pump fake. I do that pump fake by showing the blade, getting my top hand out like that. And then I step onto the leg closest to the blade of stick. So for a righty, it's like this. And for a lefty, it's like this. Right? So on, for a lefty, I'm stepping on the left leg, showing the right hand, or showing, uh, popping that right hand out. Righty, stepping on the right leg, 
popping that left hand out. All right, boom, fake that shot. Next, he throws a move to the backhand, right? So it's here and then here and then that shot. Let's go. Start with the puck right here. Yeah. Pump fake here. Yeah. All right. Let's try again. Coming in. Pump fake, backhand, shot. Now, Marchand went five hole. You can put the puck wherever you went, wherever you want. It's just the five hole opened up for him. So that's where he tucked it. Um, if the goalie really bites right here, you could just go there and then get that shot. Right? If you really want to go five hole, a good way to, uh, to fool them too is a lot of the time the goalie, when you do that move, will expect you to kind of try and go upstairs. Yeah. So when you bring the puck over to this side, if you open up, but then as you're, sh as you're shooting through, just roll your wrist over yeah. to go five hole. Uh, uh, Matthews does that a lot. He'll, he'll go like that and then like he, yeah. he kind of like rolls his blade to kind of like guide it in there. Yeah, I've seen him do that before. So, People want us to cover Matthews, I think. Uh, I, I definitely want to do Matthews. He has yeah. such a unique shot that pretty much no one teaches or practices. So we're definitely going to do a Matthews one and it won't be an April Fool's one. Yeah. Matthews will be on the cover here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so here again, pump fake, leg kick, backhand, forehand shelf it, put it wherever you want, put some targets in the net, try to hit them. And uh, you can do variations, uh, approach from different sides, play with that. But there is your Brad Marchand fake for everyone who enjoys the rat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have brought a, a plastic rat. In yeah, <laughs> just toss it on the, <laughs> on the ice. And we'll continue with a few more Pasternak uh, dangles. I think we got his, uh, his one tee. Oh no, this is a good one. Uh, so we talked about scoring in all kinds of different situations. <laughs> Trump 2020. Can we get, can we go uh, Claude Giroux? Matthews, Matthews. People are excited for Matthews. Uh -huh. Yeah, Pasta. Yeah. Can we go Claude Giroux? Exactly. He is the rat, says Leela Grande. Um, Clark McNeil, welcome back to the stream. Long time uh, watcher. <laughs> um, defensive training. Oh, okay. yeah. Don't, don't worry, guys. We're going to do, I think we'll do Matthews tomorrow. I have been excited for Matthews. So, uh -huh. so tune in tomorrow for Matthews. Uh, so this is talking about getting a shot off when you can't have the perfect setup. So you can see there's really nothing pass can do here except for try to redirect the puck into the net. That's exactly what he does. It's okay, that's a fluke. No, he does it again here. Pucks coming across. He can't, oh, where it is, right there. He, he has time, he could catch the puck. He could stick handle a few times, dust it off, try to tee one up, but he's got to read the goalie, right? So if he, holds this puck at all, the goalie's going to slide across. If he stick handles it first, goalie's going to slide across. That opportunity to score is not going to be there. Basically waste the fake that Marchand did. I think he faked a shot there and then passed it. Yeah. Just he, before that. Yeah. So just before that, uh, Marchand probably uh, faked a shot, get the goalie to kind of bite for a half second. Um, so what we're going to work on is just getting that shot off. And you can see how he shoots, where he shoots from. He's not uh, pulling the puck back. To this area he's not stick handling at first it just hits his stick and he shoots it's like he's pushing with his hands towards the net so you can see boom that's really all he's doing is pushing with his hands towards the net and kind of lunging you can see his body weight goes forwards he lunges onto that leg and he just gets that shot on net so that's what we're going to work on um, getting a shot on net um, without dusting the puck off first just basically redirecting the net so with this um, I'm going to use the hockey shot rebounder. You guys can use whatever you got. You can bank it off an old tire. Hmm. That might work for you. If you have bungee cords, you might be able to rig up something yourself. Um, yes, send us if you uh, come actually, up with anything interesting for a bass rebounder. <laughs> and he's a four-way passer on this one. Just oh, I think yeah. it'll, it'll bit, butt up nicely. Yes. Right. I'm thinking. Okay. So really all we're looking to do here, guys, is stretch out, get that shot off from an uncomfortable uh, position and try to get a decent shot on net. What you're gonna play with is the angles that you're shooting, uh, the angle of your blade, how you move your hands. These are all things you can discover as you're doing this. And remember, you wanna kind of contact the puck like right there. Uh, you could see that Pasternak, as he was doing this, he was like lunging forward and pushing like that. So you don't wanna just go like this, right? This is what you don't want to do. Just use your stick. Use your body weight still. Um, transfer that weight still, but you're trying to just redirect. And let's see if I can actually do it first try, because I haven't actually practiced this, so it should be interesting. I've probably done it instinctively. Oh, that wasn't very good. The goalie would have stopped that one, right? And this is why we practice it. That one came. Post. 
post again? Oh, there you go. Is that post posting out? I think so. I yeah. think it because it hit the it post like, target ding, and then. Ding, ding. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I like that one. Ah, missed the net. Right, and things I can play with is where is my hand? Is it up high? Is it down low? Um, right, play with different things, discover what works, how you can be successful with this move. There you go. Oh, so that one I was gonna try, I was trying to go shelf. I opened my blade a lot, but it didn't really work because when I'm, my blade's open like this, trying to go shelf, it basically just, the puck ramped right over my blade. All right, so you should probably keep your blade a little more closed. We got an iPad over here trying to hit that. There we go. I like that. Oh yeah, here we go. Get the feeling for it. Ah, lots of tart. <laughs> oh, the puck rolled up there. Whoops. I like this one actually. <laughs> Some targets. All right, that's enough messing around. I actually just want to sit here and practice that yeah. because I, I used to see like, oh, I'm not really doing it that well. Uh -huh. right? And I found a challenge, I want to keep on going. I did, um, what's important is really pay attention to feel. What I noticed uh, early on, wasn't really getting a lot on it, missing, uh, changed my hand location, changed how the, the blade is angled. Then I started uh, kind of holding the puck instead of just smacking at it. Right. I kind of tried to flex the stick a little bit more before the puck got to it and then hold the puck for like a second before I snap back. And I felt that gave me a little more control over where I put the puck. So a few different things to play, for, play with, try that out. Um, and we got one more pasta move for you guys to work on. Uh, also a shot, unless there's one more deke in here somewhere, let's see. And for anyone who came for Brad Marchand, so I, we did do one move, so you can <laughs> rewind the stream later. Uh, it was an April Fool's joke. Oh, here we go. So we're just gonna play these through. The big one T from Pasta, uh, just like Ovi, just like Stamkos, likes to uh, post up in the circle and get those uh, shots. He has a more unique uh, one-timer. So if you notice with Ovi's one-timer, if you go watch his highlights, he opens the blade, which is, um, it's kind of unique. I don't recommend doing it because it's a little more inconsistent, but like, I mean, if a pro player finds something that works for him, just, you know, if, if it works, then do it. Uh, Pasta, he closes the blade, which is how I prefer, but he kind of like over closes it. What he does is he contacts the ice first with the toe and that causes his blade to really flex. You can see in there, All right? So he's, he's hitting the ice first with the toe and you can see his you blade. See the blade flexes first, yeah. Yeah, the blade twists and he's got that perfect timing right there. He catches the puck, but he catches it kind of on the toe. It goes a bit to the middle and gets that shot off. Right, so that's something you can try if you want to play with like your blade uh, location. Try pointing your, your blade more down. You can see he does it here as well. Is that the same, same move? No, I think that was different. Yeah, but just the same shot though. So, yeah. yeah, it's exact same like, style of shot. You can see the toe hits the ice first, opens up, then he hits the puck. The puck actually comes up knuckle puck time right on the <laughs> blade. Um, <clears throat> and one thing to note here is that he goes down on one, one knee. All right, so sometimes he does that, sometimes he doesn't, but you guys can play with that as well. Uh, drop down to one knee and see if you get him a little more power. So there he does it. Here he does it as well, all right? Let's see all the moves here. So there he drives down on one knee, really. But you can see, look, he's starting the shot back here and he finishes the shot. Well, this is, <laughs> the camera moved as well. So he started the shot back there and he finishes the shot right there. That's how much movement he got into the shot because he's driving everything towards the net. Right, getting his full body weight into that shot, right? Really driving off that back leg, getting everything going towards the net. Yes, Clark, I see you want Matthews. We will cover Matthews. Spam in the chat. All right, so there, here's a few things we're gonna play with is um, getting the toe, contacting the, the ice first, and then um, dropping down to one knee. One of your drills in your shooting practice that you can do. A few, a few biscuits set up here. Uh, so first, I'm just gonna work on kind of being more on the toe. So when I come down, the, the blade, instead of, I usually have it like this, and I come down and contact the ice like this. So I'm just gonna roll my uh, wrist a little bit more, and that's gonna twist the toe a little bit more, and I come down like that. I might completely uh, muff some of these shots, because it's not a style I'm used to. Yeah. Right, I'm changing my, my routine. We'll see how it works. 
bad. Whoops. <laughs> and just uh, adjust the angle of this a little bit more. There we go. Oh, yeah, so I, I could really feel it. Um, and I wasn't holding my sticks uh, hard enough. enough so it yeah, could, opened up. Because I'm not yeah. used to it. And when it hit, my stick basically twisted like that and then like untwisted. It, it wasn't flexing. It was just twisting. Exactly. <laughs> so I guess you need some forearm strength to pull this off, which yeah. good to know. I right? think it's about knowing which part of the toe to make contact with too. If you do it too far out, yeah, it needs to be kind of like right, right yeah. in there. Yeah. So it's like, fun, <laughs> it's fine tuning, right? Yeah. But I figured it's fun to, to play with. Yeah, I mean, sure. I don't think I would convert to take my shot that way. But fun to try, right? Yep. All right. Now I don't have a lot of room to wind up <laughs> and not a lot of space as well because I'm just only For it timing there. wise, yeah. Um, now what I want to do is drop down on one knee. So Pasternak does this as well. Uh, there's a few other, uh, I'm just going to change the light a little bit. There's a few other NHL guys that do this. They drop down to one knee. It's pretty common when you're in close to the net. So this is actually perfect for me to try. I'm going to uh, try to go shelf. Let's put Carey Price in net. So I'm trying to pick it up over Price. Get it there. I put him out a little bit. Give me some distance. <laughs> the, the, right. the whiteboard thing. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Right. Oh, I put it over the net. Oh, I muffed it so that, that puck, it hit the heel. It hit like right there. I didn't swing fast enough. Yeah. That's the other thing on the one timer. Um, if you notice um, pasta, the puck is like there coming towards him and he's hitting the ice right there. Then the puck comes in and he swipes through it. And he still has it time to hit the toe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like he's timing it. So he hits the, the, uh, the ice as the puck is moving towards him. And then boom, he catches it just in the right spot. And that's all practice, 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 practice. So I'm going to work on hitting the ice first, dropping that knee. Oh, I think I put it right through the box, actually. <laughs> I didn't see I, that. It, it did. It went right through the box. You can see there's the entry wound. And uh, over here is the exit wound. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll just shoot it through the goalie. You can't get it up high. Now oh, when I put it through the net. There you go. Drop down at one knee. Oh, that one was really far back. I probably should have like dropped back like that. You got it. Oh, through the box again. <laughs> Too far in front. Oh, getting that Too location. far back. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, Ended on that one. We'll end on that one. Nice little snap. All right. Uh, but I kind of like this location. It's not perfect. Um, but I'm working on still getting those shots off, even though they don't feel comfortable. Um, so I think that is it. Let's do the question and answer. Um, yes, that is it. We don't have any more clips from Pasta. Let me know what you thought. Are there any moves you guys want to see? Uh, any players you want to see? We got a lot of requests from uh, Matt Austin Matthews, from yeah. Clark McNeil. Uh, I love Matthews. I think he's got a great shot. Uh, we got the April Hall of Fame. If you want to get on it, drop some super chats, uh, answering your questions, guys. Uh, Nicole D donated two bucks. Says I am a pasta fan. Good. Ooh, two bucks. Yep. Yeah, this is a good episode for you. Then. <laughs> there you go. That's for you. So it was yeah. soapy. Uh, Nicole. Nicole. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nicole, for uh, for dropping a, a super chat, and uh, we got a pasta fan. So I I probably should have advertised it was actually pasta, but that defeats <laughs> the purpose of the April Fool's joke. You guys are all in on it with me. Right? Uh, Nicholas. Hubin says you should make your whole garage a hockey area. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Have you seen over there? <laughs> Just start a big fire and get rid of all the rest of the stuff. Hold on, because I got camping gear, I got bikes, I got skateboard yeah. for the kids, I got my own longboard, I got a kayak over there, I got uh, Christmas decorations, Halloween decorations. If you got a family, you got a lot of stuff. I just wouldn't have any place to put all that. But I would love to have this whole garage as a hockey area and then just build a different garage for all the stuff. But. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to look on Twitch here got for some, some questions. Questions coming on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Coach Jeremy if you want to join us over on Twitch. You usually have some good questions over there. Oh, and by the way, after the YouTube uh, stream, we're going to go over to Twitch and uh, we're going to fire up the virtual reality uh, hockey training system. Oh, yeah. So, that should be fun. Yeah, tune in for that if you got some time to kill. And judging by the whole uh, pandemic, I'm guessing you got some time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you got some cool schoolwork to do, but you can wait.
I'm trying to look for questions on YouTube, but it's mostly just spam. Spam. <laughs> if you have questions, ask them now. Uh, Hayden is looking at the comments. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't spam. Just ask your question. He'll get to it. Uh -huh. um, how much did this setup cost? Oh, how much did this setup cost? For me, nothing, because I started a YouTube channel uh, like 10 years ago and over time collected some like stuff that was sent to me to review. I've got a good relationship with Hockey Shot. Uh, so they hooked me up with this tarp. Uh, I got this from what was it, the sports screen. They sent that to me, to me to do a review of. The tiles, Hockey Shot hooked me up. Oh, I, I paid for this. I did not get these for free. Uh, I think there were a few grand that I got from Costco. Uh, my brother built this thing right here. So my brother built this, I bought these. Um, Sparks machine, Sparks gave that to me to do reviews uh, or, or review. Um, what, what else? This thing I got from it Home Depot. Just Little like the rack whole, there. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to put my hockey equipment up off the floor and then um, pucks underneath. So I got some milk crates for pucks. Mm -hmm. uh, a weird person nine on Twitch asks, or he says, I widened my stance and I found that I had a harder shot when I do it. What do you think? Beauty, weird person nine says he's uh, working on, he, he worked on having a wider stance. Yeah. Said that he's getting more power. Absolutely think that, if, especially if it's like, if you're really like upright, just going like this and bending your knees, you're going to be able to shift your body weight more and you're gonna be able to drive off this back leg a lot more and that's gonna help you with weight transfer and uh, getting your body weight in your shot. So that's, uh, that's sweet that you test it out and then you find that it's working, I think you're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. um, Hockey Dude 34 is repeating his question a bunch of times. He asks, what stick do you most recommend for accurate wrist shot? <laughs> uh, a stick for an accurate wrist shot is whichever one you practice with the most. Because no matter what, uh, you're going to fine tune your shot. So find a curve you like, find a flex you like, and then work on your shot and you're going you're gonna to be accurate. If you look at the NHL, there's all kinds of different curves. OV has this ridiculous, I'll grab it if I can find it over here. What's OV stick? Maybe it's oh, not in the rack anymore. We got some super chats. Super chats! <laughs> here we go, who is it? Um, we've got Matthew Wade. And Swifty 50, a hundred dollars for Matthew Wade. Whoa, Matthew what Wade, he's, he's going for the yeah, uh, going the on Hall the April Hall of Fame. <laughs> We're putting put Matt up on the Hall and of Fame. And Swifty 50 donating five bucks says thanks for this, my streaks. favorite video. Do you have a home gym? If you don't, can you build one? Uh, <laughs> oh, can I build a home gym? Well, yeah. They, she said, "Do you have Personally, one? If I, you yeah. don't, can you build?" One? I do have a home gym. Um, I've been using it like maybe once a week. Uh, Hayden, <laughs> I've started <laughs> using it. Yeah. Anyways, talking about uh, Ovi's curve. So that's mm -hmm. Ovi's curve, and he's you know he he scores more goals usually than anyone else in the NHL. But not everyone uses this curve. So is that the most accurate curve? Well, it is for Ovi. Uh, you're gonna find your own yeah. style, what you like, and just keep on practicing, and you'll put pucks in the back of the net. Um, we got to talk about, let, let's put Matt on the, on the, yeah, on the Matthew Hall of Fame. Wade. Matthew Wade. And he Wade. says, just, he says, hey guys, appreciate the streams. Look forward to them every day. That's awesome. Th thanks, Matt. If you have any suggestions for what uh, you want to see in the stream, let us know. Yeah. M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Wade. Yep. We got to throw uh, Swifty 50 back up there. She's got the streaks going. <laughs> there we go. Swifty 50 up there too. Uh, Thanks, Matt. I mean, we, we love making these videos. Uh, I'm hanging in my garage. I'm teaching hockey. I would love to be on the ice oh. teaching hockey every single day. I'm just realizing, no, what is what currency is that? Norwegian oh. or something? Oh, okay. okay. So you got 100 something. Yeah, I don't know how that converts, but that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he donated 100 something. Uh, that could be $1 uh, Canadian. Who knows? Oh, yeah, who knows? Uh, so I didn't know they did the currency. Still, though, <laughs> I guess. Appreciate it. Only donation uh, today, so. Yep. Until further notice. Yep. <laughs> All right. Any other um, questions coming through? Yeah, let's see. Um, Jay Mazzy asks, how far back should the, your blade hit the ice before the puck for a slap shot? Good question, Jay Mazzy with a great one. How far back should your blade hit the ice for a slap shot? Um, if you get down here, Hayden. Yeah. You know. So I would say, I'll turn it this way, anywhere from like three inches to about a foot a foot or a foot and a half that looks way bigger on here oh because the wide angle <laughs> yeah yeah well okay so this tile is a foot and a half yeah so yeah that, that's a foot and a half back some pros it depends if you're moving like if you're skating into it and right. you've got that momentum the puck's coming like and and you have a you know whip. it's gonna move with you exactly so yeah. like say you have a whippy stick uh you got you're really strong you know you're just gonna bend that thing you could come in here if you're on the move and hit there drive 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 and then hit the puck there all right so 
it depends on a lot of things. I'd say three inches is like the, the minimum, maybe like right about there. Be nice and close right there would give you enough just to flex it a bit and get that pop. Mm -hmm. uh, any closer and you won't really get much pop off of it. And then you could go at like maybe a foot and a half or two, but it depends on your strength um, yeah. on, the, on the whip of your stick, but good question. Um, o three 3 boys says, does it matter if you flex your stick on a one-timer? <laughs> yes, obviously. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter if you, if you flex your stick on the one-timer, absolutely. Uh, so on a one-timer, I do recommend hitting the ice first. Now, it's a good question because depending where the puck's coming from, like if someone is, is sending the puck almost right at you, then that's going to help you flex your stick because the puck is coming towards you, you know? So someone could think, oh, I could just hit the puck and the puck will help flex the stick. But you do want to hit the ice still first, get the flex, then you're going to contact the puck and that's going to flex it even more and then you build up extra whip and then get more power. So yeah, definitely work on hitting the ice first on the one timer as well. I found that gave me more power, more accuracy, more consistent shots. Um, I was aiming just for the puck because it's just like, oh, I'm trying, to, I'm staring at the puck so much trying to make sure I get contact, I would end up just hitting the puck. And then right. once I realized, oh, I should hit the ice first, I started doing that and I was like, oh, my shots are coming off and not a lot cleaner now. Mm -hmm. so. That ties in well, someone else was asking how you can get your stick to flex more. We did a whole yeah. stream on that if you want to go back. I, I can't remember what day it was. Yeah. But we, just look at, I think it was me or day you, we were, like, three, we're just leaning on the stick, like, yeah. <laughs> that's the thumbnail. Yeah, so we, we do have one on getting more flex out of your stick, but yeah. uh, basically it comes down to the short version of it, your hand location, you want it at least halfway down your stick, uh, where you contact the ice. So if you're stretching really far out like that, it's going to be hard to, to flex it. You want to contact the ice a little closer in towards your body, that way you can drive your bottom hand into it when it's located at the right spot and also dropping your weight and driving your uh, weight through your bottom arm into the stick. That's going to help you flex your stick more. Um, Connor LaSalle says, we did a shootout in my peewee practice and I sniped between the legs top corner and one. Can you shout me out? Good Woo! job. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Connor, Connor LaSalle? Was it? Uh, Connor LaSalle, I think is how Connor LaSalle. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Sweet shootout move. Way to go, buddy. Yeah. Uh, hard work pays off working on that move. And you know, that, that was one of the moves that we worked on today in the stream. So. If you don't have it, go practice it, and uh, it shouldn't take you long before you get a few nice ones off. And I think I could use a little more work on it too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Eric Treister says, do you have to go on one knee and what for what shots? Love these videos, can't wait to see Yep, them. Eric Treister uh, was up on the uh, Hall of Fame. I think it's, it's Connor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Connor got commenting from his dad's account. Right. Uh, you don't have to go down on one knee but you can. I find the best time to do that is when you're in closer to the net. That's typically when I see the NHL guys doing it. Also, sometimes if the puck is a little further back in your stance, they'll go down. So if it's, if it's like back here, they might step and come down like this so they can kind of get behind and get that shot up. And that's typically why they're going down on one knee. It's to get the puck up when you're in close. And guys have been doing this for a long time. I think Brett Hall was one of the first guys I saw doing that right. in the NHL, and that's going way back. And uh, yeah, now a lot of guys do it in close, getting that puck up in tight. Uh, Nicholas answered us. He said 100 milk equals 1356. <laughs> so, so 13.56. Thanks for the conversion. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate everything, guys. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, check Twitch again. We'll do uh, a couple more comments and we'll wrap it up. Then we're going <laughs> to uh, fire up the virtual reality hockey training system. Uh, Lucas uh says how do you block shots then shoot some at hayden <laughs> okay yeah maybe next stream no next stream we're, yeah. we're checking out matthew's goals all right <laughs> i think any more questions guys i think or yes someone asked what gear do you have but yeah i mean it's, pretty it's a wide range <laughs> it, it's a pretty wide range i should do like an in the bag video or something like that yeah um so unless anything else comes in that, that we're gonna wrap it up uh we'll keep the twitch stream going i have I'll, I'll show you guys actually i got a virtual reality hockey training system uh in the garage that I've had tucked away in here. So basically what happens is we have these sensors that go on, on uh, the stick, and then it's actually a special stick right here. It has a sensor inside of it as well, uh, if you can see that, and it vibrates, it tracks the stick movement. Uh, when you shoot a virtual puck, it actually, like you can stick handle and shoot them, it's oh, pretty cool. That's awesome. So uh, there's a headset that you put on, and then when you put it on, you're like inside of a hockey arena. Uh, so I'm gonna, so cool. <laughs> I'm gonna pull that out, uh, fire it up. It might take a few minutes. Go to Twitch slash yeah. uh, Coach Jeremy. If you go to yeah. Twitch, uh, Twitch slash TV slash yes. Coach Twitch Jeremy. Twitch TV slash Coach Jeremy. Uh, you can hang out there and we'll fire it up and I'll get Hayden to try it for the very first time. Yeah. And uh, I'll show you on the screen what it looks like. Uh, tomorrow, we're doing Matthews. 
So tune in tomorrow at noon. Thanks for tuning in this stream, One everyone. One last thing, Ray Bro 246 happy birthday, buddy. Oh, yeah. and happy birthday to yeah. Ray. Yeah. All right, thanks, All guys. Right. See you tomorrow at noon.